Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, A Century of Car Aerodynamics, The Science and Art of Cars and Airflow. What I want to cover in today's video is the 1975 Porsche 924. It's a car that is actually covered in this book. Now, if we look at the 924, it was very unlike a Porsche of the era. You know, the people were used to seeing the 356, seeing the 911, and then along came this completely different shape, followed obviously later by the 928. Now, the 924 wasn't actually intended to be a Porsche, it was intended to be a Volkswagen. And Porsche developed it for Volkswagen using a lot of Audi and Volkswagen mechanicals. Uh, but at the last minute, Volkswagen said, no, we don't want it. Uh, we think it's going to be too expensive to sell as a Volkswagen. So Porsche said, all right, we'll pick it up. And apparently they changed only the badges and the key before it moved from being a Volkswagen to a Porsche. Now, let's look at the aerodynamics. There's a few quite significant things about the car's aerodynamics to look at. Firstly, aerodynamically, it was very good, except in one particular aspect. It was very good in terms of having a very low front and very small cooling air intakes for the time. These days we look at it and it just looks normal, but at the time, the cooling air intakes were very, very small, which helped reduce drag. It's beautifully rounded. There's nice transitions from the, the bonnet or the hood to the windscreen and from the windscreen to the roof. And it's also rounded at the back, something we're gonna come back to in a moment. Now, the drag coefficient, the CD, was only 0.36. And you might say, only 0.36? Isn't that terrible? Mid-70s, that was extremely good. And you've got to be very wary about a lot of old drag coefficients. I see stuff being published all the time that's simply incorrect. Whereas this is a properly measured one. And 0.36, as I said in the mid-70s, was, was really very good drag coefficient. However, when the headlights went up, so did the drag coefficient, going up to 0.38. Now... I mentioned uh, a moment ago there was something bad as well as something good. Well, let's keep looking at the good, but this image shows us some of the bad as well. So it's a uh, wind tunnel uh, test, obviously, uh, with smoke streams showing the uh, streamlines of air. And unusually, uh, Porsche have also injected smoke into the low pressure wake behind the car. Now the wake, that turbulent air behind the car, the more energy that goes into the wake, typically the higher the drag. And, and most cars, that means the smaller you can make the wake, the lower the drag. And this has got an exceptionally small wake. So that's one major reason for that low drag figure. Now, we can see that the airflow across the upper surfaces of the car is attached, it's following the shape of the car, in other words. And that's good also for low drag, but also if we look here, we can see it all wraps around that great big long curve from there to there. Now, if you think of an aircraft wing, you think of the curve over the top of the wing, we know it develops a low pressure, and that's exactly what this airflow is doing as well. It's developing a low pressure, which in turn is pulling upwards on the car, creating lift. Now, we don't have to take my word for it, because we actually have a pressure plot showing surface pressures on the top of the car. We can see here, we've got numbers 1, 5, 10 going all the way to 50. And then here they correspond to these numbers going across the bottom axis of the graph. We have pressure coefficient up there. Where I've colored it green, it is a high pressure, above atmospheric. Where I've colored it yellow, it is a low pressure, below atmospheric. And we can see here, if we look between five and 10 at the front part of the car, that's where the air is coming towards the car and being slowed probably nearly to a halt. And so that's the highest pressure in the stagnation zone. And here we have that high pressure. Whereas when the air is starting to wrap over the curve of the bonnet or hood, we'd expect it to be a slightly lower than atmospheric pressure. And there it is, the yellow showing lower than atmospheric. The base of the windscreen, the air is slowed again, the pressure rises, and there it is. And then as the airflow flows over here, we're going to get pressures below atmospheric. There's the peak as the airflow wraps around the curve at the top of the windscreen or windshield. And there's the low pressure all the way across the roof and back hatch. Now, if we look at pressures acting on a panel, we can just draw a right angle coming up from that panel and get a feel for where the force is acting. So here, well, if we draw an arrow going straight up, well, that's going to be lift. But here, if we draw an arrow coming out at right angles from the panel, we can see it's angled backwards as well as upwards. So that's going to be causing some drag. 
So you don't get something for nothing. Even though you're getting that small wake, you're also getting drag as well as lift from that airflow wrapping over that upper surface. Now, Porsche actually published data showing the lift values, showing the lift figures for the 924. So along the bottom axis, we've got speed in kilometers an hour. On the vertical axis, we've got lift in kilograms, kilograms force, which is exactly the same as, the, as what you would read if you, you had a scale, when you, a spring scale, when you pulled on it, and what that spring scale showed in kilograms, it's exactly the same as the kilograms force being shown here. Now the blue line, this one here, shows front lift, and we can see it certainly rises with speed, as you would expect. We can see at a 100, kilogram, 100 kilometers an hour, it's about eight kilograms lift, and by the time it gets to 180 kilogram, 80 kilometers an hour on the front axis, the front uh, axle, it's over 25 kilograms of lift. Now you might say, well, that's not much. 25 kilograms, what's that, 50 pounds, 60 pounds, something like that, not very much. But the thing with aerodynamic lift in cars is it disproportionately affects the stability of the car. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, as you reduce vertical load on tires, grip goes down quite fast, and the other one is, because these figures aren't static, they're, they're oscillating, they can really upset the car. Uh, lift figures, even though we say, you know, X kilograms force, is actually often changing very rapidly, which can discombobulate the suspension. But look at the back, the orange line. Now that really is a lot of lift, that airflow wrapping over those rear curves. We can see at uh, say 160 kilometers an hour, 100 miles an hour, we have 45 kilograms of lift. At the back, 180 kilometers an hour, we have 60 kilograms of lift, lifting the car up off the ground. Now, it's even more important because rear lift is worse than having front lift. You don't want any lift, obviously, but if you do want lift, it's better to have it on the front than on the back. The back disturbs the directional stability of the car as well. So we can see the Porsche had a fair bit of lift and then we had the next model come, which was going to be the turbo, and the turbo was going to have a lot more performance. Obviously, Porsche engineers had to do something about that amount much lift. You just couldn't let it keep growing like that and growing. Uh, obviously, as you went faster, it gets even worse. And so what they did is they added this little ducktail spoiler. Now, let's look at how that actually works. We've got the airflow wrapping around here. And then it starts to run into the obstruction, which is the spoiler, and that airflow slows. And airflow that is traveling slower develops less low pressure. So we've increased the pressures on the back hatch. Now, remember the hatch isn't just level, it's inclined. And if we increase the pressures or reduce how low they go, if you like, we're actually reducing drag as well as lift. Remember that backward component in that low pressure? And so when they fitted that rear spoiler, they reduced drag as well as lift. So it could achieve both things. All covered in my book, A Century of Car Aerodynamics, uh, has a, a section on the Porsche 924 and other Porsches I cover include the Taycan, include some of the 911 models and a whole range of fascinating and interesting stuff on car aerodynamics going right back over the last 100 years. The book's out now, you can buy it direct from Amazon. Thank you.